Order! 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 You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Government plans to tackle air pollution will now have to be published before the general election following a ruling at the High Court. Ministers had argued that publishing the document would break rules on official policy announcements during the lead-up to polling day. In the ruling, the threat from air pollution was described by the judge as real and persisting. Our science editor David Shipman reports. Heavy traffic outside the High Court as the government once again faced questions about air pollution. This time because of another delay in releasing its plans. An environmental group, Client Earth, was there to argue that ministers should speed up. The government case is that an election rule called PERDA prevents them doing that. In his judgment, Mr Justice Garnham said that PERDA was not a reason for delay. It is not a trump card to be deployed at will, he said. And he described the dangers of nitrogen dioxide, a key pollutant. The threat is real and persisting. The government told the court that it was ready to publish its clean air plan, but couldn't because of the convention known as PERDA, restricting the release of major new policies during an election campaign. But the judge didn't accept that. He said the government's own figures showed as many as 64 people were dying prematurely every day because of dirty air. So what's the next step in this battle over air pollution? Well, the judgment orders the government to publish its new plan right after the local elections next month. It's a sensitive time. Well, I think it's very important for everyone to understand that this isn't a, a political decision uh, and that cleaning up the air isn't a matter of politics. What the judge said very, very clearly is when you have a legal obligation uh, and a court order to do something as important as protect the public health by cleaning up the air, politics does not come into it. The government is considering whether to appeal. Whatever it does, the court's ruling will eventually have an impact on millions of drivers as new measures to tackle pollution come a little closer. David Shukman, BBC News, at the High Court. Now, the High Court has thrown out a government attempt to delay publication of its plans to tackle illegal air pollution until after the general election. Campaigners have been pressing the government for years to draw up a strategy to improve air quality. Now, Mr Justice Garnham has ruled that the draft plan must be made public by the 9th of May. Our science editor, Tom Clark, has more. Until the Clean Air Act of the 1950s, soot-stained public buildings bore testament to the dreadful quality of Britain's air. The High Court on the Strand has been scrubbed up since the Coal Age. But today, the building was home to the latest battle over improving our air this time from a more invisible source. Traffic pollution, mainly diesel fumes, and the health threat they pose. The government was appealing for a delay in publishing an overarching plan to deal with air quality UK-wide. It's lawyers arguing the convention called PERDA, which typically prevents government from publishing new policies during local and general elections, meant it couldn't bring out such a major consultation between now and polls closing on June the 8th. Mr James Eady QC, representing the government, said publication of the plan would be like dropping a bomb of controversy during an election period, potentially giving the impression the report was a Tory plan. The court accepted local authorities were the major consultees in any plan, likely to involve congestion charging or low emission zones in towns and cities across Britain. But it considered air pollution was an urgent public health issue and that general election PERDA was no excuse to delay taking action. In his ruling, Mr Justice Garnham told the court that PERDA rules were a convention, not a trump card, to be employed at will by a litigant. And citing DEFRA's own data, he said that 64 additional deaths a day could be attributed to air pollution for every day that the government delayed publication of its air quality plan. It was a legal challenge in this same court by environmental campaigners that forced the government to produce better clean air plans. This was the result they wanted. And what the judge said is uh, merely because there's an election going on doesn't trump the public health. This is not a political issue. Uh, one day of delay is important. Weeks or months of delay is intolerable. That's what the judge decided. And in my view, he was right. 
The government must now publish its air quality plans as soon as local elections are over in May. The Department for the Environment, which can appeal, said it was considering the judgment. For thousands of voters who live in cities or near busy roads, air pollution could well be an issue in the local or even the general election. Before either of those, the government was supposed to have published its plans on how to tackle the problem, but it has been stalling. And today, the High Court said it must get on with it and publish after the local elections next week, perhaps, but well before the general election. Dawn in Leeds. As rush hour slowly builds, so do the emissions. It's a city in regular breach of EU pollution thresholds. Heading for work, this local cyclist says his route shows exactly why government action is long overdue. Quite unpleasant when, the, uh, when you go past large vehicles and you can really feel the fumes coming from them. Leeds is already earmarked for a new clean air zone with growing restrictions on high polluting vehicles. But there are demands for much more action from government. <laughs> I think if we could remove more traffic from the city centre by improving public transport, cycling facilities, maybe implementing some park and ride schemes, that would be so much better. Down in London today, the High Court dismissed government attempts to delay its clean air plan till after the election. To some, it seemed that politicians were afraid to risk riling motorists ahead of polling day. Cleaning up the air isn't a matter of politics. What the judge said very, very clearly is when you have a legal obligation uh, and a court order to do something as important as protect the public health by cleaning up the air, politics does not come into it. Back in Leeds, this mum has asthma, but needs her car to commute. She's pleased the government is now likely to target diesel. I am a little bit wheezy at the moment. Um, obviously, I've been driving around in traffic. You see vans going past, and obviously with them being diesel and things like that, it's, it, you're totally conscious of potentially how it's going to affect your chest. <laughs> Pollution is largely invisible. But this latest infrared camera can help change that. Thermal imaging highlights where emissions flow on this busy road in Leeds. Just like this city, 37 out of 43 UK areas are in breach of legal limits on nitrogen dioxide. It looks like just over 4% of all the deaths in Leeds were attributable to poor air quality. They, they could then be hundreds of deaths a year caused by air quality just in Leeds. And what we see here in Leeds is a direct correlation between the quality of our air and things like respiratory disease and cardiovascular disease. Government insists it has a robust plan to deal with this, but it took today's High Court ruling to ensure the rest of us now get to see it before the election. Chris Choi, News at 10. 23,500 deaths a year from nitrogen dioxide poisoning. That figure was cited by the High Court judge today in his ruling that the government cannot block the publication of their draft clean air plan until after the general election. They claimed publication would drop a controversial bomb into the mix of local and national elections, but that didn't wash. And after the local elections, we'll find out what Theresa May plans to do about reducing dirty diesel, the main culprit. The Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, said he hoped that the government will urgently introduce a diesel scrappage fund to rid our streets of the dirtiest cars and give financial incentives to buy clean vehicles. Other cities across the country could set up tolls for diesel cars. What are the chances? Here's our technology editor, David Grossman. How does the government plan to clean up our air? It is as important a question as it is urgent. But ministers are fighting shy of providing any answers. By 4pm on Monday, they should have published their plan, but they asked the High Court for a delay until after the general election. The judge, though, agreed with the organisation that had taken them to court in the first place, Client Earth. The judge listened to the government's claims that it needed to delay taking care of the public health, and he rejected them vigorously and is keeping the government to the deadline to release the final plan on July 31. The judge was quite forthright about the public health cost of delaying any plan. What did you make of that? Uh, the judge has read the evidence, uh, and it was DEFRA's own evidence that uh, up to 40,000 people a year die of air pollution 
uh, in the UK. And what the judge said is, uh, merely because there's an election going on doesn't trump the public health. This is not a political issue. Uh, one day of delay is important. Weeks or months of delay is intolerable. That's what the judge decided. And in my view, he was right. Make no mistake, this was a huge blow to the government's attempt to keep a lid on the growing scandal of air pollution. The judge was, in fact, contemptuous of the government's attempts to delay again the publication of a plan to clean up the air. He told them in terms to get on with it because every day of delay means people are dying. In his judgment, Mr Justice Garnham said these steps are necessary in order to safeguard public health. The continued failure of the government to comply with directives and regulations constitutes a significant threat to public health. A big contributor to this problem, say researchers, is the government encouraging drivers to buy diesel cars because they produce less CO2 than petrol cars. Diesel went from being under 10% of sales in 1995 to over half by the start of this decade. People who bought diesels in good faith need to be helped to, to transfer to, to clean vehicles or alternatives to driving as much as possible. Um, that's certainly part of what needs to happen, hence, hence a carefully crafted scrappage scheme. Uh, but uh, it, it needs to happen. We need to get rid of diesel, phase out diesel as soon as possible and ultimately petrol too. What we didn't know until recently is that the environmental tests that diesel vehicles had to meet bore no relation to real world conditions. And so, the amount of particulates and nitrogen dioxide that they pumped out into our cities was far in excess of what the government was expecting. For example, the amount of nitrogen dioxide measured by this testing site on London's Marylebone Road was double the EU legal limit last year. The government's problem is not so much presenting the plan as the price tag that goes with it. Who is going to be made to pay? The people who made the diesel cars, the people who drive the diesel cars, or the taxpayer. Either way, the best time to present such a massive bill is not right before a general election. One group that represents drivers fears that diesel owners are going to get punished for the simple reason that they're the easiest to tax. Only 10% of the problem comes from diesel cars. 90% comes from other issues like buses and trains and uh, uh, roadside construction equipment. Even uh, 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 you're looking at sort of boilers from commercial outlets in London. 90% of NOx comes from those particular sources. Only 10% comes from diesel cars. And that's the issue that we're, we're concerned about because those diesel cars, those drivers, those hard-working families, the small businesses, white van man, are all expected to pay a tax hike, and that is wrong. The government, we are told, hasn't yet decided what to do next. But as things stand, ministers will have to publish their draft plan in just 12 days' time. David Grossman, Will Ed Davey, is a Liberal Democrat who served in the coalition government as Secretary of State for Ed and Climate Change from 2012 to 2015. Matthew Penshaws was London's Deputy Mayor for Environment and Energy under Boris Johnson and now works in the sustainability industry. Uh, good evening to both of you. The statistics are absolutely shocking. Why does it need a court to make the government come clean on plans for diesel? Well, it's a good question. Conservative ministers should be hanging their heads in shame. They've prevaricated, they've not taken action, they're trying to hide this from the electorate, when this is a public health scandal. Um, people talk about public health issues, but the uh, air pollution, the damage it does to people's health, is bigger than the crisis of obesity and alcohol abuse. It's that significant. There's no justification for the delay, was there? There's no justification for trying to... It was, it was going to be some huge controversy if it came out before the general election. What could that possibly be? Um, well, I think your report kind of sums it up. Um, they don't want to go into an election, understandable from their point of view, with uh, punishing diesel drivers. Now, that doesn't strike me as good governance. They should get on with it. Um, but I think politicians up on the stump uh, don't want to face, I think, as their QC put it, the, the Tory tax on diesel plan. But we have known about this problem for years. And since 2010, we have been nowhere near the EU limits. So it's a plague on all your houses, every politician, every advisor. Well, in the coalition, Liberal Democrats took this seriously. Vince Cable made big, big step forward with electric vehicles. If you look at what Norman Baker did as a transport minister, he set up the Green Bus Fund. I did a lot on energy efficiency in homes, because that's really important. Yeah. Because actually, a lot of the nitrogen dioxide comes from but, burning gas. So we took a big issue. But, but we let, had, let's just we be had quite clear. with our Conservative well, just, Let's be clear. I mean, I would suggest that the 
coalition perhaps was no better because the Environmental Audit Committee in 2014 said the government had failed to face the problem. You were the government. Well, we were the Liberal Democrats side of the government. You were we, the government. Li the Liberal Democrats in the government took action. Our Conservative colleagues wouldn't. So, for example, this is this, the people who are in charge of this, people like Owen Paterson at DEFRA, yeah. who failed to take it seriously. Vince Cable did, Norman Baker did, I did. Liberal Democrats did. But you, and traditionally... But you were impotent. The t well, no, we took action, which helped but our Conservative colleagues time well, and again refused to act. Well, I, well, I'm not suggesting that you are the Conservative government. You were the Deputy Mayor under Boris Johnson. You know a lot about this mm -hmm. issue. What do you think the measures are in the draft plan? Um, well, I should, the first thing I should say is that from my experience, uh, the coalition government didn't step up until it was forced to by uh, losing in, uh, in the Supreme Court about, around two years ago. And I have to say, from my experience at City Hall, um, Liberal Democrat ministers were not... Um, uh, were just as difficult to engage with, I guess, than their Conservative counterparts. You were difficult but, to engage with well, on We this. took action, but let's, let's talk no, about no, Boris... No, no, you, no, let, me, let me just answer that point. Well, I've given You're you examples, accused. clear examples of actions we took. You're accused of being difficult to deal we, with. We, we, we took action, but Boris Johnson went to Brussels to try to argue and make coalitions to undermine the European standards. Well, so fact, Boris Johnson, far from showing leadership, he tried to undermine action on, well, on air pollution. He well, was outrageous. And, 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 and of course, uh, you know, 2014, from 2010 to 2014, you were so far behind in London. Boris Johnson did not do enough well, to reduce I, emissions, dioxide, well, dioxide, there's a few things, dioxide I think there's emissions. a few um, things I'd like to challenge there. The, the first one is about going to Brussels to water down the rules. Well, that simply wasn't true. Whenever I went to Brussels, it was trying to get those diesel um, real-world real drivings tests to work properly because that was some of the problems. And we had a coalition of other... Um, heavily populated industrial areas of Europe around going to the Commission trying to get united action to reduce emissions. Uh, it was we are not going to have to worry about united action for much longer. But can, we just, can we just go back to the point, because I think people would like to know, what will, in your view, be the principal measures in the draft, in the draft plans? Um, well, I think we're going to see more of these clean air zones. So we mm. saw um, my former boss, Boris Johnson, create the uh, ultra-low emission zone, which the new mayor, and kudos to Sadiq Khan, is bringing forward. So he's bringing forward the measures um, faster than we were going to bring in, and, and I think that's a good thing. I think you can see the government bringing more of these clean air zones. I think my concern is only that they are a bit of a blunt but the, instrument. But the cost, I mean, what David Grossman seems to be suggesting there, that it's, that it's not so much what you do, is the cost of it. What is the cost of introducing well, There's a huge cost on people's health. The health mm. service is picking a massive bill. So actually there's an overall saving if you actually take it over a period of years. And therefore the government can't hide behind cost. That's an excuse for not taking but action. If, and we're fed up of those excuses. But if, if, but if the, the action is, is, is going to be tough and it comes out before the election, I assume that the reason the government did not want this to come out of the election because they think it will have electoral consequences for the very people, the van drivers, the so-called white van man, who will be hit very badly by this. Uh, well, well um, it, it's absolutely right about the medical and health impacts and the cost of the NHS. Um, and that's obviously spread widely across all of society. The, the difficult for the politicians is that bringing forward these diesel um, bans or charges is you're imposing quite high costs on a relatively few number of people. So if you look at the impact assessments for the uh, clean air zones, the original air quality plan that the High Court ruled illegal, that was a billion pounds. If you look at what the ULES compliance cost, it was £250 million pounds in one year. But very, very, so very, talking, briefly, very briefly, is it wrong to go after diesel drivers? It was supposedly, according to the witness in that film, Ed Davey, it was only 10%. Well, we can help diesel drivers go to electric vehicles and low emissions, but we, it's not just diesel uh, cars, it's lorries, it's trains, it's other aspects. If we actually use, able to use less gas by insulating mm. our homes and saving money... And that will be in the plans? It, well, I don't know if in their plans. It's certainly Liberal Democrat mm. plans. Thank you both very much indeed. I've been getting